Thank you very much. And then I'm sure Cancun and what is going to happen there is going to weave its way through this conference. Let me just turn to the audience. Uh, if you have a comment, please feel free to also uh, speak in uh, Korean language if you wish. I think we have interpretation. We can get uh, that translated. Maybe I need to have just a headset up here. Are there any uh, comments, questions, um, reactions from you as participants? I see a first hand down there. Can we have a microphone? It's coming. If you could briefly introduce yourself and uh, ideally keep it to a minute so that we can take a few and have a bit of interaction. Hi, good morning. My name is Tina Quizan, and I'm here from Hawaii. And this is addressed to uh, Club Rome Ezra. Is that how you say your first? Yes. Uh, when you talk about that one of the assets that's not on the financial books is the human potential, is, is that what you're saying, that we need to look more at everyone's individual human potential and begin to include that on the assets of the systems that to find what everyone can do that would be productive instead of looking at it as an obligation of taking care of the people to find out what they want to do and be allowed to do it? Is that basically what you're saying? Can I ask Ashok to hold on for a second and I'll take a, a few more comments if, if there are some so that we can have a, perhaps respond in a, in a round together. I see a second hand there. Yes, uh, microphone over there, please. And um, I will move to the left. Yes, I've seen you. Thank you. My name is Chris King. I'm with Demeter Corporation, and this is for Angelina. Could you speak up a little bit louder because we have uh, not such good uh, sound up here, at least, yeah. Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Yeah, my name is Chris King. I'm with Demeter Corporation, and this question is for Angelina. You mentioned the smart grid, and I was just wondering what your vision was for how the smart grid fits with renewable energy and promotes the implementation and adoption of that. Can you hold on? I'll, I'll come back to you, yeah? Just take a note. Um, then I had a question here, gentleman behind the camera. My name is Ram Nidamolo. I'm the CEO of a company called Innova Strat. We provide advisory services to the global finder corporations, in particular taking advantage of sustainability-based opportunities. And I think the, there's one key thing that I think was missing from this panel discussion. And uh, that's the crucial importance of building a business case, assisting businesses in building the business case for sustainability. And uh, I think uh, if you see a lot of hesitation, I guess when you talk of vested interests and mindsets and so on, I think many of these things come down to not having that clarity in terms of the business case. And uh, once that case is built, or steps are made to improve that, I think you would see a lot of movement. Thank you very much. Any more comments? Yes, gentleman here in the middle. Microphone, please. Here. Don't run away. Hello. Microphone here. <laughs> Next block. Next block. Yeah, the gentleman here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike, uh, I'm from... Sorry, Lourdes. microphone is not on. Can we have... Now it's on. Please speak loudly. <laughs> Uh, I'm Rahul Kar from KPMG. Uh, my, uh, my question to you was, you mentioned about valuation, uh, and valuation is not possible in the short term quickly. So why do you think, what are the constraints of getting a valuation done? And why it is not becoming part of the financial reporting for any company? Thank you. Any more hands that maybe I have overlooked in the back? Please shout if I'm not seeing you. If I don't have any more hands, then I'll go back to, to our panel. Yeah, no, one more hand. Yes, please. Akim, this is uh, Richard Kyle from the Regency Foundation. Um, in our view, vested interest is the single most important obstacle to progress in respect of the issues that we'll be discussing over the next few days. A, does the panel agree? And secondly, as a group here today who are largely committed to assisting to resolve these issues, what more can we do? Thank you. Okay, let me um, perhaps begin with uh, Georg for a moment. Georg, you mentioned 6,000 companies have affiliated themselves with the Global Compact. If you add 
the total value of those companies, that's fairly substantial. We've heard now from the question about the business case um, to you know, vested interest, um, to the kinds of discussions that Ashok also alluded to. Where, where do you see the greatest transformation? I mean, is it going to be through legislation? Is it going to be through awareness and tackling vested interest? What is happening in the corporate sector? Because you also, in your opening remarks, made the point something is changing. There are those who say, yes, it's just superficial. Well, we know it's deeper by now. But give us two or three of the major drivers that you have observed in the membership of the Global Compact and beyond that are driving this, even if they may not fully yeah. explain it. No, thank you. And uh, I think the business case is getting stronger virtually by the month and by the year, certainly. Uh, when I sounded a little bit uh, skeptical, then it was uh, rather to be realistic of where we stand globally and uh, in the light of the big challenge we are facing, reducing we will have twice as much energy demand in two decades, but at the same time we are told we need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 50%. Uh, so the business case is getting strong and what is driving it is actually good strategic long-term management. Those business leaders, and many of them are indeed here, who understand, who want to be in the business over time and for the long run, they anticipate future trends and they factor them into current investment decisions and allocations. And if you look into the future, then you must realize that natural resource scarcity, energy efficiency, the need for radical innovations, for new solutions uh, to grow poverty on the bottom of the pyramid into opportunities is obvious. But how do you make it happen is, of course, a challenge that every sector has to face. And luckily, there's a lot of innovation happening. And technology is indeed, I believe, the key for many of the challenges. So in short, it is strategic long-term orientation. The question then is, why is the world not yet collectively more in the long-term wisdom search for wisely allocating resources and valuating current performances and returns. The answer, I think, is partly vested interests. The human nature in itself, I think we all are short-term in our pleasure-seeking and valuation, let's face it. So are markets, so are societies, and many of the incentive structures. So we have a huge challenge in moving the incentives, actually, towards rewarding performance over time, uh, financial market reform is important. Uh, many in the investor community are now waking up that chasing just a short-term return is not a recipe for medium-term success and so forth. So it's a messy process and the drivers I think are is corporate strategy, an obsession with technology and the future, the search for solutions, uh, barriers are plenty, perverse incentives, disconnect from one country to another, the threat of uh, closing markets, actually. I'm a strong proponent for openness, because only through open markets can technological solutions travel rapidly around the world. So if we manage to get incentives into markets that reward long-term good performance, and actually cost, if you so want, the negative, it will happen. 